Let's continue the conversation about the CR30 Naomi Wu's uh, 3D print mill. There she is on the box, the sexy cyborg herself. Now she's the one that made this printer happen. Uh, she's been working with Creality and really pushing it through, but I'm not gonna go into the history of the project. Click on the link in the description to her video to hear her explain it and how she involved all of the people from the West, from America, uh, who have been working on printers such as this. So really there's no, uh, there's no, what should I call it, issues with um, pedigree. <laughs> now let's put it like that, like it's, it's above board. Everything's good about this printer. So uh, we're gonna dive into a lot of the issues um, that I'm experiencing as I'm learning all the ins and outs of this printer, uh, getting to know it this last week, starting with a very functional print on the printer itself. I'm making what I think is gonna be maybe the most functional object that I've ever 3D printed. So let's pick it up right there. Well, I have no idea what's going on with this um, extruder, but for some reason it's doing the whole skippy deal. Yeah, this isn't good. All right, I have stopped the print because I'm reasonably certain I know what's going on. I think it's the classic Creality hot end problem. Can you guys see that discoloration on the belt? It looks like I got about a centimeter worth of printing where it wasn't actually extruding any filament. On the right is the hot end that I pulled out of my Ender 3 Pro, and it is identical to the one that comes on this printer. So Luke Hatfield's uh, hot end fix will work. But even more relevant to the print problems that I'm having at this point is the fact that these two screws holding the hot end on this beta test unit that I received came loose. So uh, I needed to tighten them back down and then I had no more layer shifting issues. On a separate issue, I had to adjust the bed level here with these two knobs. And when I did that, it changed the way that the bed sits in relation to the rollers. So now, when I put this straight edge here, my framing square, I am like a half inch. Well, maybe only like a quarter inch, but still I'm a quarter inch up off of that roller, which is absolutely an enormous gap. So this roller will never get used um, in this case. So this is a total failure of this design. Somehow we need to be able to adjust this um, roller mechanism, the outfeed table here, so that it aligns itself with the print bed after we adjust the print head, the print bed relative to the nozzle. Well, this is interesting. Uh, it was just beeping at me from across the room and I came to look at it and I got this message. But you guys can see there's filament going into the, uh, into the filament feeder and it, is, it does have movement, so Ah, this is, this is very interesting. The print looks quite good. So I don't, <laughs> what an odd, what an odd, odd thing. Oh, you know what? Maybe this plug? No, the plug couldn't have come and done. The, the light is still on. All right, what is this saying? Insert filament and press the button to continue. Now what is interesting is there's a kink right here. There's a nasty kink in my filament right there. That is, I mean, this is the cheapest lower grade filament that I can get from China. So maybe, maybe there's a filament motion sensor in here. I'm gonna have to look into that here in a minute. So I think, wow, I think that the, the machine just caught something pretty interesting. Yeah, super cool. I can tell because the, um, the filament is scarred from the, uh, from the hob gear up to there. So that means that that distance, which is that distance, so this, was feeding into the filament sensor here and it detected this gross nasty ugliness and that's why it popped this error. So this just saved my bacon. How cool is this? Man, this cheap filament, gotta tell you, I have to dry it like crazy even though it's PLA. It's got, um, I'm, I think it's got some, what do you call it? Um, uh, hips high impact polystyrene, which is even less expensive than PLA. So I think they've doped the uh, the filament with hips, which means that it soaks up moisture from the atmosphere really badly. So I'm constantly having to dry it. Every time I do a print, I have to dry this filament like it's nylon or something like that, even though it's PLA. And then it, when it gets moisture in it, it gets super brittle and it breaks before it even makes it into the extruder. 
Uh, so yeah, you pay for what you get. You buy the lowest quality print uh, filament from, from eBay, this is what you're gonna get and you're gonna have issues like that, that quality control there. So that filament is just the worst and I'm convinced that it was the source of my nozzle jam and it's gonna cause further problems later on in this video. All right, my first oversized print is finished and I just wanted to show you guys that uh, my suspicions were correct. This part is not making contact except right here with this roller. Even here on this side, there's a gap. So there's a gap all the way through on that one, a gap on that. So these rollers do nothing. It's not until this third roller, fourth roller, that it's actually catching the print. And this print is extremely thin here and extremely heavy out there. So if all of the prints that you're gonna print off of this thing, if this one cantilevers itself and self holds itself out to here, then all of them are gonna do that. So it's just a very stupid design to not have some height adjustability uh, in the whole roller tray here uh, so that the end user can line it up that it's actually doing you know some job although I have to say how much of a job is it doing like how how needed is that um, it's it's really overkill you could probably get away with like one roller here and one there so two rollers in total alright well there it is uh, let's jump on the computer and I'll tell you guys about uh, these bits of geometry here. This geometry is not mine. I downloaded it from a torrent site. You can find geometry such as this on your favorite torrent site. But I did modify it a bit. Um, I have a plan for you know making this into a useful object. Um, but there are some considerations for this specific printer that we need to talk about. Now, uh, this isn't a tutorial, but I'm gonna quickly summarize what you need to know to slice for this printer. Gravity doesn't matter, period. Gravity is irrelevant. What is everything, the only thing that matters is the direction that the filament's coming out of that nozzle. So because it's at 45 degrees, that might as well be gravity. So think of all of the issues that you're normally used to thinking about with 3D printing relative to that bed, and then rotate them 45 degrees. So in that direction is where you need to worry about overhangs and bridging and all that type of a deal. So on a normal printer, like if we were doing this on a normal Cartesian or uh, Delta printer or whatever with gravity, with the nozzle coming straight down from, from above vertically to the, hor to the uh, horizontal plane in the bed, then what we would have to worry about is um, these pink surfaces here. So these would all be um, bridging or just straight overhangs and you'd need to support them with support material. So basically, as you're used to thinking about it, this file would print at this 45 degree angle. And we all know that 45 degrees is perfect for overhangs. You can get away with all kinds of an overhang at 45 degrees. So um, all those surfaces are no longer matter, but now we have new surfaces that are gonna be overhangs, namely these surfaces. So. You can see we've greatly lessened the surfaces that need support material. And if you were going to print this on a normal printer, wow, you'd have to have a really high Z height, um, but you would also have to have some crazy tall support material going from there all the way down to the bed, which is a very long, large distance. Thankfully, the bed in this case is going to be right up against this flat face right here. So uh, we don't need large support material. And um, well, it's actually, it, it greatly lessens the amount of support material that we need for a print such as this, which is awesome. However, we have a problem. And that problem manifests itself here in Kira. And actually this is Black Belt Kira. So Black Belt is the professional company that makes a very nice version of this printer, higher quality, better than this one. But um, because they're the pioneers uh, at the moment in the space, they are the ones who are uh, paying programmers to modify Kira to work with these types of printers. So this is, I think, our only option for printing uh, on this printer at the moment, and it's pretty buggy, you guys. So um, I'm not gonna get into it. It could be its own full episode, but basically it's gonna try to build support material under all of that, just as if this was a normal print, you know, happening like this. And also, the support material is sort of twisted 90 degrees, so the what would normally be the zigzag, the walls of the support material as it goes up, is actually what's going to be supporting that ceiling up under there. Um, so I don't like it at all. Um, it's totally sloppy, it wastes tons of material, and for that reason, I'm going to draw in my own support with a 
three millimeter gap between the actual part and the support, which I think is kind of the standard for good release of your support material. And here in this translucent view of the, uh, of the part, we can see the support material that I've drawn in. So I, I've decided to support along this whole entire edge here. I actually don't think this is needed at all. This whole chunk there could probably be removed. This is all that is truly needed. And even this, uh, we might be able to get away with it if we didn't care about sort of a rough undercut there. But um, I am gonna, I want a good print. I want a good print. So I am gonna put this uh, part in there. So yeah, this is basically just custom support. It's not gonna make it zigzaggy or real thin like single wall support. It's gonna print all this geometry as if it was a solid part, but it's still a whole lot less material than if I let um, Black Belt Kira try to place the supports underneath all of those horizontal, horizontal surfaces. They're not horizontal relative to the printer. They're only horizontal rev relative to the true uh, coordinate system. So. Yeah, work needs to be done. A lot of work needs to be done on that slicer still. It's not fantastic. <laughs> but this will work, so let's get it printed. It is a successful print. Oh, geez. <laughs> wow. Just wow. All right, well, <laughs> you saw it with me first, right here. That's, uh, that's what I just experienced. Let's figure that out, and then we can talk about it. Well, the good news is my um, DIY support material is breaking away quite nicely and quite easily. Taking a look at a piece of this support material here, um, we can see that this cheap, cheap filament is uh, striking again. Um, just look at how easily this snaps on the layers. So that is really, really poor filament performance. And um, in combination with this filament that I've had to dry in the dryer like four times now. Like I said, it, it's PLA doped with um, hips is my suspicion. I, I mean, I, I don't have like a spectrometer. I can't an analyze it myself, but just by the behavior, I'm suspecting hips is what's uh, in there. Another factor exacerbating the problem here is my 2.5 millimeter high layer lines. So that's um, higher than normal because um, I wanted to print more quickly. And like, you can't, you can't do this to normal prints. Um, it's, I don't think this is a, I don't think this is a function of the, um, of the printer here. I think this is purely because of the, the filament. So yeah, I mean, this sucks. I'm not going to be able to use this part. And, um, well, I mean, it is, it is a multi-factor problem. Here we have some sort of a layer shift artifact. You can see it right there on the print. See it right there through there? And so if I bend this, I guarantee it's going to break right, right there. So, yeah. Um, this, is, this is not viable. All right, let's talk about this failure a little bit more. But first, I'm going to turn off the printer because I'm tired of talking over that fan noise there. Isn't that so much nicer? So classic, classic China with crappy, horrible, loud fans. I don't know how long, like how many times do all of the reviewers have to say it? Give us quiet fans. China, listen to me, please. For the love of God, give us quiet fans. That noise gets to your psyche if you have to work in the same room as the fans. It just, it grates on you. It makes you incredibly angry. And you don't want to be making printers that make people angry. <laughs> I mean, this kind of stuff is frustrating enough. I've got some exaggerated lighting happening again, and you can see the roughness of the layer lines. Now, turning it this way, it doesn't look so bad. So that's definitely exaggerated with the lighting. You saw that this just fell apart when I lifted it up and held it up there like that. So let's try to break this part right now. Actually, I can break it pretty easily. So that is, that is definitely a problem of the filament. Yeah, look at that. It's not even breaking on the layer lines. It's just breaking. So this filament is the worst. Look at, I've got one more of these layer shift problems manifested in the print way up here, you know, where there wasn't enough, enough leverage to break it. So um, we can clearly see a gap. I pulled out the macro lens so that we can do an analysis of this failure of the print here. Um, keep in mind that this is printing, you know, layer here, then layer there, then layer there. So it's moving in this direction as it's printing. Now we can see the crack right here where the layer separation occurred. And after that crack, you see this dome, you see that bubble up right there on this side of the crack. So that's after it cracked, it kept kind of trying to move. And 
there's two possible sources of that movement that I can come up with. First, the belt might be doing something funky on the printer. And second, we can be getting strange part cooling warping occurring. And I think it's the latter. I think it's part cooling. This filament here, I'm like I said, I'm strongly suspicious that it has um, hips, high impact polystyrene, which every time I've printed with it has the worst uh, shrinkage of any material I've ever dealt with. So doping the PLA with hips would make it not behave like PLA. It would make it behave worse than ABS even. So I do think that this is a, this bump here is a continued part, or I'm sorry, yeah, part shrinkage, um, just warping of the part as it continues to print after the crack. And I think that it's so bad, the internal stresses in the part are so bad right here that it's um, it's basically cracking as it's printing. And exacerbating this problem is the fact that hips needs to print at like 245 degrees. So in order to get a good print with this material, with this filament, I should be printing way higher temperatures than this printer can handle because of the nylon bed. I have an idea. Okay, the problem that we're facing is this awesome textured woven belt is made out of nylon, which means, according to Naomi, I can't print higher than 240 degrees Celsius, otherwise we'll have a catastrophic bonding incident where that print is never, ever, ever coming off of this uh, print surface, off of the belt. So let's change the print surface and take a cue from uh, some people who have done belt printers like DIY versions of these belt printers in the past. We'll just coat the whole bed, the whole belt, with some capped on tape. And this should provide enough of a barrier between the 255, 265 degree nozzle and the nylon to hopefully not catastrophically bond the capped on tape with the nylon, but still get good, um, you know, high temperatures needed for uh, printing, you know, higher strength plastics and also for printing this stupid, you know, um, hips doped PLA. So I think with higher print temperatures, my layer adhesion is going to be a lot better. And um, well, that won't do anything for the warping, which is causing these gaps, these cracks, but um, it's worth a try. So I'm going to cover the bed with Kapton, and then we're going to print all over again at 245 degrees. I've got this first loop of Kapton installed on the bed, and um, I'm just sort of cycling it through its first rotation. And you can see that it's nice and, you know, there's no bubbles. It's nice and adhered to the bed here. But at this end, as it comes around that roller, these wrinkles get introduced. And you can hear it kind of snap, crackling, and popping as the wrinkles get introduced. And then it's so funny because they sort of straighten themselves out and they just they pop back into place without, no, without any wrinkles down here at this end. Well, that's exactly the opposite of the way we want it because this end up here is right where we're printing. So we're going to be printing on top of wrinkles. You can literally watch the wrinkles disappearing here around the halfway point on the bed. I've taken it on a few more cycles around the belt and you can see what's happening here. So this is real bad. Can't have this. So what clearly needs to happen is I need to do this print again with some actual real PLA, not this crap here. Um, now, just as a side note, I've been getting a lot of stuff that I think is doped with um, hips, but this stuff has like a higher percentage of hips than any of the stuff that I've used previously. So I've taken to printing all PLA prints at 240 degrees on my normal printers, just in case it's got hips in it. That's how I get a good layer adhesion. But um, I need some bona fide, real quality PLA, and I don't have any. The only stuff that I have is the stuff that came with the um, CR30 belt printer here. So the plan now is to do a test print with this stuff, because I, I don't have enough on the roll here to do a whole other one of these prints. Um, so I'm gonna do a test print in vase mode just to test a long skinny piece to see how it prints on this printer to see if those artifacts uh, on this print are a product of shrinkage of the filament and not caused by the printer itself. <laughs> what a cliffhanger, right? A failed, very functional, but failed print 
Uh, and that's where we're gonna leave it. Now, I do have to say that without a doubt in my mind, that print failed because of the crappy filament because it was shrinking as it was printing. So that is very telling though, as far as um, using other high temperature plastics on this machine. So we're gonna have a challenge getting those to print without warping at these long lengths. Um, so pretty key uh, thing to learn. Now, I do have to say that it is 100% the filament, and I know this because I printed this, which we'll have to save for next time. But yeah, proof positive right there that the printer performs really quite well. So tune in next time for you know the, the final completion of this review video. I'm just trying to keep uh, you know the attention of everybody and hour long videos are bad for my channel. So in two days, yeah, in two days, I will release that video finishing up this review. And hey, on, uh, fr on Sunday, at 10 a.m. West Coast time, tune into this channel. I'm gonna do a live broadcast unboxing the Mingda D2. So there's that. All right, well that'll do it for this video, I think. Big thank you to these guys. These are my um, executive producers. And hey, shout out and massive thank you to all of my Patreon supporters. You guys know who you are. Nobody likes to sit through the list of names on the screen, but um, I'll do that again at some point. Anyway, you guys mean the world to me. You really do. You're the reason I keep making videos. So thank you so much. Um, if you want to watch another video that YouTube thinks you will be interested in, click right there. And if you want to support this channel like the other uh, Patreon supporters, click there. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye.